Yeah, hi guys, uh, Ryan back with you here again. Uh, I'm out in Farmington, New Mexico, uh, right off of US 64. Uh, sorry I haven't been on for a couple days. I've uh, been on the road since last Friday. It's Tuesday now, I believe. And um, I w we got a GoPro set up and all that, or uh, some type of camera. Um, so I've been doing videos on that, and it's set up to where I can do it while I'm driving and all, uh, you know. Um, so it makes a little bit better time use, and I get bored out here anyways. Um, but uh, the problem with that was the, the I pulled the videos off and was trying to upload them, um, and they're like for a 10 minute video is like eight to nine gigabytes. So it's um, with using Wi-Fi or a hotspot, it is near impossible to upload those videos. Uh, so I'm kind of back to using the uh, the phone deal here, and uh, just wanted to get one out to you and had a kind of an important topic I wanted to talk about. Um, that I just it's fresh on my mind just ran into here last week and um, so we'll get into that but uh kind of go outside here pretty nice little quiet mom and pop truck stop here uh, pretty nice scenery nice and cool not too much wind um, so sort of, by the way I, I did that load out of Cleveland to uh, Salt Lake City and then I went like 10 minutes away and I got a load of fireworks uh, now uh, going down into New Mexico and see 1.4 golf there um, so these are going out in Walmart stores I got to stop in um, first stop is in Española New Mexico uh, second one is down in Las Lunas down south of Albuquerque then uh, the last one's up in Las Vegas, New Mexico, which doesn't really make any sense to me because it would have made more sense for that to be the second stop and, you know, put me down farther south there would be closer to El Paso because I already got another load booked and um, it's coming kind of out of uh, south of Roswell down by closer to the Texas border around that uh, eastern side of the New Mexico. A load of salt went up to Pennsylvania, kind of north central PA. But uh, as far as this, this uh, trip, uh, that load out of Cleveland uh, to Salt Lake City, uh, pretty at 30,000 pounds. Uh, it was 235 load board, uh, about a dollar 60 to the truck mile. And uh, this load I'm on now, it paid 312 a mile uh, on the load board. It's uh, only about 15,000 pounds, so it's pretty light. Uh, like I said, it is fireworks though. And uh, three stops, uh, about 820 miles, I think, with the way they have it routed. And uh, so 312 load board and about 212 or so to the truck. So not too bad. Um, the load I have going back uh, east uh, isn't as good, <laughs> but um, I haven't had hardly any deadhead to, to speak of on this trip. And um, I've been pretty light loads and everything's kind of laced together pretty quick. And um, that'll put me back, I mean the next one I'm, I'm like a dollar ninety-eight I think load board. So that puts me down around, you know, like dollar thirty-five-ish, which is not where we want to be, but um, gets us back over that part of the country and it's really flexible I can pick up any time I want this week 7 to 7 and I can deliver any time next week so um, so when I find another uh, where I'm delivering that's up by Sayre Pennsylvania so which we have an account up there a pretty good account uh, cabinet components and cabinets um, so maybe I can put it together where I get something out of there but um the thing I wanted to talk about today are these uh, 120 day truck inspections here at Landstar um, you'll have to do one before you come on when you're coming over here then every 120 days you're gonna have to get one done and uh, they have a pretty good network uh, of shops um, pretty much any TA and Petro um, with, with an asterisk um, there are I guess there are a few exceptions but uh, once you get on the uh, Landstar online or if you're coming on board they will send you a list that uh, that has all those sites and there's a lot of other smaller shops too I mean I typically get mine done at a TSI Western Star over in uh, North Jackson, Ohio, uh, kind of in between Akron and uh, Youngstown, so it's only like 30 minutes from my house, and uh, that way, you know, if I got any issues or anything, I'm at home and uh, kind of take care of it myself. Um, so if you watched my U-joint video last week, um, that's kind of what that has to do with. <laughs> but um, so I'll go ahead and get into these 120-day uh, inspections. It's it's an annual inspection, but it's 100, every 120 days, and. Um, so if you've done an annual inspection as a company driver or anywhere else, um, it's the same deal, just every four months, uh, you know, brake lights, tires, dry shaft, uh, all that type of stuff, brake rod uh, links, uh, just anything you're going to do. It's a complete annual inspection. I'll show you the form here in a little bit, but um, I kind of wanted to talk about strategy on this. Um, because you can get yourself in a pretty bad position if you do it at the wrong time or in the wrong place because um, you can basically get extorted 
because uh, by the shop that you get it done at, and this has happened to me, and it, there's been a lot of horror stories, especially um, at TA and Petro's. Um, so I've, 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 like I said, experienced it at a TA myself, and I know a lot of guys um, complain about it because uh, if you have an item on this inspection, it has to be you. It has to be fixed before you leave the shop, or you have to be going really close. Um, to another shop or to your house to fix it yourself. Um, so I, to give you a little story about this, I was out in, that, in Ontario, California, there at the TA. Um, when I had my other truck, my T680, this was probably a year and a half, two years ago. Um, this truck, it didn't, I think it only maybe had 125,000 miles on it at the time. And uh, so I was laying over there for the weekend because I, I dropped off a load of pool chemicals right down the road from uh, the TA there. And I had a load picking up right down the road on the Monday, um, so it could get me a nice little work in a 34 there and grab, you know, lay over the weekend. And and uh, so I had some time, so I figured, what the heck, I'll go ahead and get this uh, inspection done while I'm out here. I mean, I wasn't even, I had plenty, I had like another a week and a half, so I could have got it done when I was at home, but I opted, since I was already there, just to get it done. And um, so I pulled in the shop, the guy goes over everything, and, and I, I'm... An ASC certified mechanic, um, so I've worked on trucks and equipment for a long time. So I, I am, I could go get qualified in the state, you know, in, in Ohio if I wanted to, um, to do those inspections. So I kind of know a little bit of insight. And uh, the, the guy took a long time to do it, and then um, he crawled underneath. He was underneath the back of the truck for a long time because I was sitting in the truck uh, while he was doing it, and he went underneath there with his creeper and he had a can of penetrating oil like WD-40 and I thought that was kind of odd because I don't know what you'd be spraying when you're doing an inspection because you're not working on anything um, you're just looking at stuff and taking measurements and checking lights and all that um, so he was underneath there for a while and then he got out and he went over to his paperwork and came back and he acted just kind of weird uh, just just odd and um, so I was like, oh, everything looked good, but you got a wheel seal leak, and I was like, uh, I was, and I, earlier that day, I greased the truck. Sometimes if I'm, I'll grease the truck, then I'll go in and get a shower. I mean, it only takes 10, 15 minutes to grease, I get underneath it with the grease gun, put on coveralls, and, you know, I do it right before I go in and take my shower. So I was just under the truck, and I looked, did a pretty good look over it, and I, I didn't see anything leaking on those, and um, at that, that I mean, it, new stuff can fail all the time, I, I won't deny that, it happens, but um, I, I didn't see anything, and I, I don't see that, that, I didn't see a seal going out that, you know, I wouldn't think one would be out, going out that mileage, but anything's possible, and I don't see everything, I guess, but, um, so, he comes out and says, yeah, you got a wheel seal leak, and I'm like, where? And I, so, I was like, is this under there? And I get underneath, I look at it, and he kind of shined his light way up, like, back in behind the, the brake shoes kind of up in by the hub on one of, on one of the, the drives and um, there was, it was wet up there but it wasn't on the brake shoes or anything like that um, wasn't running down and he's like so and then he comes out he's like so what, do you, what after he showed me he's like what do you want to do about it what, what are we going to do here and I was like uh, I'll fix it this was the first time I ever had a, a problem with uh, something on the truck at Landstar and I said well I guess I'll have to replace it when I get home and uh, you know, you all know I live in Ohio, in Los Angeles, it's like I don't know, 22, 2400 miles. Uh, and he's like, well, you know, Landstar, they won't, uh, they won't go for that. You know, they won't let you work for them, and you know, you might, they might get rid of you. And I was like, so what are you getting at? And he's like, well, you're gonna have to get it fixed here. And I was like, all right, well, what, what do you? I, I was like, I obviously don't have the stuff to do with me here in the parking lot, <laughs> um, as with a lot of stuff I do. But uh, he was. It was really strange, but um, so I was like, okay, give me a price, and he comes back, and it's like five hundred fifty dollars for. And and if you've watched my wheel seal video, um, I can go get the same seals at Napa for thirty five forty dollars. Um, and so he's like, oh, we gotta price the shoes and this and that, and I'm like, there's nothing wrong with the shoes. They're not even. Wet. He's like, well, that's our policy, and I'm like, even if there was a little bit, you they can be cleaned off with brake cleaner. There's no reason. They, they only they didn't have I mean there were no miles on there's no reason to place them so I was like oh okay. it's our policy and it's not all right whatever and you know I'm not gonna get in trouble right now and I had in my maintenance fund with that truck that I had on that lease I mean I had like eight thousand dollars so I was like oh, whatever um, I ain't gonna play this game but um, I I really feel I can't prove it um, so I didn't 
do anything crazy like making a plane or anything but i don't think that was actually leaking i think when he had his penetrating oil in there he sprayed because the, their mechanics as far as i know they get paid hourly and they get a commission on the parts and labor that they sell so i don't know there wasn't a lot of trucks in the shop that day and maybe the guy wanted to make some money so i don't have 100 percent proof but i'm not the only person who has uh had these types of situations and uh and had it happen to there's been a lot of i mean if you listen if you're on the land star thursday uh safety call or whatever uh you get a lot of complaints on there about especially with the tas and petros and that's why now um i never get it done on the road for one and i do it i do it when i'm at home and i do it when i have plenty of time except for last week i kind of screwed up um because i kind of procrastinated i was planning on getting it done at the beginning of the week and i waited to the end of the week and i already had a, i did it on th on a thursday and i had a load picking up on friday um so just a tip i would highly recommend you get it don't be on a load when you get it done do it close to home or do it at a shop you like that you can trust because there are smaller shops on the landstar list that are qualified not just tees and petros there are a lot of smaller mom and pop shops that are qualified to do the landstar inspections and um and i always i've gotten the habit i do it at, at home when i have a lot of time that way if there's a problem i can deal with it i don't have to cancel loads i don't have to get extorted just like last week they wanted to charge me it was 800 dollars to change two 40 dollar u joints um and i went home i even bought a press because I've, I've done them before with a jack and using something heavy to press them in the uh, the u joint caps but um it, they just wouldn't budge on that one so i ended up getting a 20 ton press for my shop and the u joints and i even put new straps uh, clamps on the u joints um two joints on that center shaft and i was still right around 300 bucks so i got a shot a press for my shop and um got the job done and got passed and everything and they, i took it back down there and re, they re, you know certified it as repaired sent the stuff in the landstar good to go no problems no extortion um so i highly recommend that and also look your truck over before you take it in and just see if there's anything out of the ordinary that you might want to i mean if you see wheels you look up in the wheel you know the up in the brakes see if you got seals leaking um tre uh, tread depth make sure all your lights are working it just makes it um a lot easier to, to check it beforehand which i i didn't catch it i mean that that you joined the one was was getting pretty bad um i usually check that kind of stuff when i'm greasing that's why i like doing my greasing because it gives you a good opportunity to get underneath the truck and go a little bit farther than you will on your regular pre-trips uh, and i try to do that every three to four weeks um, so that's something else to look at but uh, the main thing is do you do your inspections at a shop that you like and you can trust if they're on the landstar list do it close to home or close to a shop that isn't on a landstar list that you might like um, be, that you can drive your truck to and don't be on a load and don't um <laughs> and don't have a load booked you know prior to that or you know after the inspection really close like i did because i almost got into trouble if it would have been you know something a little bit more serious or if i would have had um you know if the yoke or something on the drive shaft would have been screwed up and i had to get that fixed uh, cut off and welded i would have had to cancel loads and uh, i don't like doing that because it kind of makes you look bad with the agents and all that kind of hurt might could hurt the relationship especially when it's something like an inspection and not like a you know an emergency breakdown so those are just some pointers for that 120 day inspection if you guys got any further questions um you can get on the about page you can uh, get, get a hold of us by email um i've been a little behind on the comments and stuff it's just been a little hectic uh, with we have a couple other deals we're working on and and uh just being out here on the road so uh, it usually takes me two days or so before i kind of get into the, the night routine and all that and get caught up but uh, i will be getting everything caught up here pretty soon but um i'm gonna go ahead and show you the uh, inspection form here and um, that's pretty much it but um, like i said we appreciate all the views and all that and um and uh but I'll, I'll go ahead and show you this and we'll go ahead and wrap it up here okay so this is what you're looking at on the form uh, here's everything they're looking at your brake you know your brake system fifth wheel exhaust system um so you can kind of see everything i'm not going to go through every every one of them but um see what's on there lights obvious um safe loading that's more um if you got a spare tire or if you got a flatbed and you got your dunnage and stuff on there uh, steering suspension frame then um tires obviously wheels and rims any welds and uh, then they'll take all your um you know your tire measurements and all that tire sizes brake stroke length uh 
and all that good stuff. So it's like I said, if you've ever done an annual inspection, then um, it's pretty well what you're looking at. But um, I kind of hope that helps out with y'all and um, save everybody some pain and a little money um, on these inspections. Uh, because like I said, if you go, if you do this at the wrong time in the wrong place, um, it can it can cost you a lot of money. Especially, I mean. Maybe it ain't the right time for it. Um, you know, you could be in a bad spot or something at the time. But um, the big thing is just uh, I, I can't say it enough. Just do it at the right place and the right time. And when you're not on a load or don't have anything booked, if you can, um, and they'll let you know. I mean, a month out uh, when this is due. Um, so you got plenty of time. So just plan ahead and uh, be proactive about it, and you'll be all right and um, won't get extorted like a lot of people have, including myself, I think. But. Um, so that's pretty much all I got for you today. Um, I'll try to get back with a uh, load update and all that here pretty soon. Um, but uh, if you guys got any questions, again, uh, check out the About page. Uh, hit the bell for it, uh, the updates and subscribe and uh, comments. And we appreciate all the comments and compliments and all that. And um, we'll see you all next time. So thanks.